resist. I just need to hear some opinions about the election. About the, the what election do you think? or the election? <laughs> well, either one, but we'll start with the election. The election was a pretty big thing. <laughs> The election is uh, just shows that the the uh, our system, whatever it is, is uh, just a, it's a dinosaur. The political, you know, Gary yeah, Johnson yeah. is right. It's just, um, and I I think if you look at the world, if you look around at what's going on in the world. You see, it's what the world looks like without America. That's what it looks like without America. So that's why Christians are being, uh, uh, you know, that's why you don't have any Christians coming over with the, the wonderful immigrant population, because they've murdered all of them already, every fucking last one of them, <laughs> even in a country like Egypt. Which, yeah, yeah. yeah it's because of one man uh, is, is with us, is on our side, in spite of Obama. Um, even there, they've just, they've just about killed every Coptic Christian in the country. And of course, it's not newsworthy. Just, I guess it's just not a big deal. So, uh, and all the wonderful gay people are, um, you know, there's only one country in the Middle East that wouldn't chop their hands off or their heads off. Mm -hmm. And uh, that would be Israel, mm -hmm. which would uh, defend them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the Christians as well. So. So, so there's really been zero progress. Uh, you know, there are just all dictators running the fucking show. And, and when you get rid of one of them, you ought to know. When you get rid of a Gaddafi or you get rid of a, take the Americans totally out of Iraq, uh, what's what's step two? What's the next thing? And uh, so with all, all the time and experience and stuff that uh, Hillary's had, she doesn't seem to know what the next thing to do is. She doesn't, strategically, she's, planned rather poorly, it looks like, if you look at the scope of the Middle East, because mm -hmm. there's not a country there, but, you know, every one of them, from Yemen to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to wherever you, you find. And Syria, of course, has com almost completely laid at uh, Obama's feet for, uh, I mean, when, when you blink and duck a, a red line that you drew yourself uh, with all these dictators and bad guys, uh, it empowers all of them. They, they, they note that. We may not note it. They note it. They note that Obama is a spiritual wimp. Mm -hmm. That's what they and that they're not going to have any problem with him. That's exactly what they've all observed, and they're right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, no one's really afraid of Forrest Gump, and that's pretty much what we have is a Forrest Gump. A great candidate. Boy, he's a great candidate. That's where he probably should have stopped. That was his uh, long yeah. suit, being a good candidate. Yeah. So, um, so it's uh, Donald Trump against a steam drill. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm, for, I'm for John Henry always, so I guess I'm, I'm for Trump. I don't think he's going to make it, but um, you don't. You really think he won't make it? I, 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 I hope he does. Um, as I've said recently, uh, you know, Jesus rode in on a jackass. You know, the, the more people that say, I mean, we're so afraid of him. When I was in Europe a few months back, everybody said we're so afraid. Oh, we're petrified of Donald Trump. I tell him, well, you motherfuckers didn't have a, um, uh, you don't have a very good track record uh, at knowing who to be afraid of. Now, as I recall, you were not afraid of Hitler and Mussolini. For the That's longest great. of time, you thought they were clowns. You thought they were harmless. And you thought that Neville Chamberlain was right on target with the way where he was going. That he could bring them along, you know. And so uh, you really didn't know who you should have been afraid of. So, and then you sticking with World War II, when you've got Churchill and you've got FDR, they're kind of like Donald Trump in a sense, in that they were just wasted young aristocratic freaks when they were younger. We would have hated them. I mean, they lived in, inside the country club. Where was, we're on the outside looking in, most of us. That's a hipper place to be. And, and those two guys uh, became great in, in office. Something happened where they, there was a bond with them and the, and the uh, common man that really was palpable, was genuine. You know, they were a disgrace to their class, both of them. And, um, that is where greatness sometimes comes from. When you look at a Gandhi, just remember he was the most obnoxious motherfucker when he was in London as a lawyer dressed in Western clothes. And I mean, he was a terrible person to be around. He only invented himself 
uh, in a South African prison when he decided, what am I wearing this tie and this fucking suit for? And who am I? And he figured it out. And he figured it out way before most of, most people ever did. And uh, that's why Gandhi and Mandela and Jesus and Martin Luther King, that's that's a real force. I mean, those are some precious people, some, some real leaders. So I think I'm either going to vote for Trump or write in Bobby Kennedy. <laughs> but, 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 but what I'm trying to say about Trump is greatness comes from where you least expect it. And people say, he's never worked with black people, he's never helped poor people. And no, he hasn't. And neither had Albert Schweitzer, and neither had Mother Teresa. None of those. They're all from that same kind of aristocratic background. I mean, where they didn't have shit to do with, uh, with really helping people, that's sometimes uh, where greatness comes from. So to think that you can that you can think, you can say, that I say that uh, Donald Trump could never, you know, show any real backbone or anything, you know, uh, he could never, uh, I mean, he wouldn't be nuanced enough to be able to handle the situation or to, to handle a crisis, you know? What the fuck, uh, how can anybody, how can anybody know what greatness is? I mean, uh, maybe he's a Teddy Roosevelt. I mean, Davy Crockett was a lousy politician, you know, and he was a great man. Um, others. Yeah. Andrew Jackson was a different kind of president than some pompous of feet motherfucker, you know? Uh, so we all have uh, different styles there, but but the, the people, uh, people usually pick uh, Barabbas. That's just the way it is. The crowd picks Barabbas, and they did last time. They said, yeah, free Barabbas, kill Jesus. That's what they decided, and that's what they well, did. Well, do you think Hillary would be a good president then? Uh, no. No, I don't think she would. I don't think she deserves to be one. And, uh, you know, and I think just, um, I don't think she's going to make any change at all. Right, she's, it's she's, just the she's, same old thing. She's very happy to talk to Black Lives Matters all day long, you know, and yeah, say how yeah. wonderful they are. And she can you know, go ahead and do whatever, she will do whatever is required to, to win this thing. How and do you think we got here as a nation? I mean, were these two candidates, like basically people don't... We have, we have the two worst, uh, we have what George Carlin said, the illusion of choice. Yeah. That's what we have. <laughs> The great philosopher George Carlin, yes. and 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 we have the illusion of choice. And you've got a guy like like Trump. That uh, Trump is not my hero. You know, right. Don't get me wrong. No, I, yeah. There's a man that my hero is Mr. Anonymous. Trump's the guy who gives a million dollars to a children's hospital and puts his fucking name up on the wall. Yeah, yeah. I know where Trump has spent his life and what he's been doing. I'm just saying, in spite of that, God is a pervert. God yeah. is very perverted yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah. He will not pick. A guy like you might spend your life trying to help people, you know, and all that. Just the most kind-hearted social working schmuck in the world, you know. <laughs> and you'll never, you know, you'll be a lousy president. And a guy like Trump can come in there and you can say, Jesus Christ, where did he get these horse shit? Horse shit! <laughs> My famous Texas horse shit sneeze. <laughs> so it, it might be horse shit. Maybe, that, maybe God is, through me, is uh. saying what all the bullshit that I'm saying, you know? But I'm just saying, to sit there and say, this guy's a fucking joke, this guy can, you know, he wrote in on a jackass, he's yeah. not gonna be anything. Well, Jesus was something. He did amount to something, after all. Good Jewish boy, got in a little trouble with the government, that's all. <laughs> uh, so, so to think that uh, Trump is, you know, is, might, uh, he has as much chance of being a, a good president, or a great president, oh. as anybody else, and, uh, I, I just want to go to all these countries and look at Israel included. One way or another, they fucked over every single country in the world. You know, they fucked over our allies, that's for sure. That's for sure. So, and, and, uh, and every other country has just gone to hell. Not all because of us, but mostly because you're looking at the world without America. That was awesome.